What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a minimal house step in Zero in the style of Christosi and Coulter. This is what we're going to create today. Ready? Let's jump straight into the project. Okay, so we start by loading up Serum. These are the MIDI chords that I'm gonna use for this tutorial. You can just pause the video and copy them into your own project. So for the first oscillator, we're gonna to go to analog and we're gonna select the basic MGB and we're gonna set the wavetable position to around here. Next, we're gonna set the unison to five and turn down the detune to around here. Next, we're gonna to go to oscillator B. Here, we're gonna select the Juno set the wavetable position to three, set the detune to three and turn down the detune. And we also want to turn down the octave to minus one. Then we're going to do some fine tuning for those two oscillators. So for oscillator A, we're going to set the fine tune to four and for the oscillator B, we're going to set this to minus four. It's just to make the oscillators drift a little bit and make them sound a little bit more analog. Next, we're going to go to the sub oscillator. Here, we're going to select the square wave and we're going to turn the level all the way down because we're going to use an envelope later on. Next, we're going to go to the noise oscillator. We're going to select the ARP circuit. We're going to put this to one shot mode and we're going to set the random phase a little bit up so we get some random notes every time we hit. And we're also going to turn down the level because we're also going to use an envelope to control the level amount. Then we're ready to navigate to the filter. So we're going to enable the filter. We're going to go to the MISC and we're going to select the German LP filter. We're going to enable this for all of our oscillators. We're going to set the cutoff to around here, and we're going to turn up the drive a little bit. So we have something like this. Okay, so now we're ready to go to the envelope section. So for envelope one, which is the envelope for the amplitude, we're just going to create this like short, plucky sound. Then we go to envelope two. We're also going to turn down the sustain a little bit, but not all the way going to add a little bit of release and then we're going to add a little bit of decay and we're going to use this envelope two to modulate the filter cutoff so just put it to around here and then as i mentioned before we're going to add the envelope two to the level of the sub oscillator and also for the noise oscillator so set them to around the envelope the modulation amount to around here so we have a little bit more of the layering on top of these two oscillators The reason why I like to use the noise oscillator on top of my other oscillators is that it just sounds more analog instead of just having this. It just has a little bit more grittiness in my opinion, and it also adds a little bit of transient with the noise oscillator. Okay, so there is another cool tip to add a little bit of more extra motion because that's what we want to go for with this stab sound is to add motion all the way. So it's always evolving. So we can actually go and modulate the panning knob of the sub oscillator and the panning knob of the noise oscillator. And we can do that in a quick way. Go to matrix, go to source down here. Then we can use this, the source called note on random one. Basically, this just means that every time you press a note, it's just going to add some random values. So we can just put this up. And for the destination, we can start with the sub oscillator, select the sub oscillator panning, set this to go both ways, and we can just increase the modulation amount. So every time the note hits, there is going to be like a ra random panning amount to the sub oscillator. And we're also going to do the same thing for the noise oscillator. But because I want to have a little bit more randomness, I'm going to select the node on random two instead and go this way, set the amount to around here, minus 15. I'm going to go noise oscillator and noise panning and also make it go both ways. So we just have something that's changing all the time. It's just a subtle change, but it can really make a difference if you're doing like this minimal house, because these house steps can change over time. And that's what we are going for. Okay, so now we're actually ready to play around with the effects in Serum. So if we go to effects, we're gonna go to the filter and we're gonna select the MG Low 12. We're gonna set the cutoff to around here, up with the resonance, a little bit of drive. 
a little bit of fat. And what I want to do right now is that I'm going to create an LFO1 sine wave shape. And basically I want to have LFO1 to control the cutoff frequency of this filter effect component. Because then if, every time my notes, the chord steps are hitting, the filter is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to go to LFO1. I'm going to go down here and select basic and sine. And I want to set this to an unsync rate. And we're going to take this and assign it to the cutoff filter. So now every time we play, this is really a matter of playing around with the, the amount that you're sending the LFO one to the cutoff and also like the rate down here, because it can really make this sound move over time and really like have some really cool texture to it. We're going to go back to the matrix again because I want to add a little bit extra modulation. So we're going to go to the node on random one. And for the source, we're going to select the filter, not the filter in the effects, but the filter in the oscillator se section, basically, for the cutoff. And then basically, we're also going to add a little bit of random modulation to the cutoff frequency. So this one is going to change. And this is where it's going to sound really, really dope, in my opinion, is when everything is just moving. It just gives the music some life, basically. And this is going to make a really huge difference when we're going to add some reverb and some delays in the effects section, because when the filter is opening and closing, it's going to affect the reverb sound and also the delay sound. And it's going to get like these classic minimal house um, steps, basically. Okay, so I want to add a little bit of extra modulation to this sound because I just love to do modulation to my sounds. If we go to LFO2, we're going to go here and create a shape like this. I cheated a little bit because this you have to draw this in manually and I don't want this video to be too long. Basically, what we want to do here is that we're going to assign the LFO2 to the course pitch of oscillator A and B. And we're only going to set this to free the modulation amount and basically what this is going to do is that it's going to add some kind of vibrato effect to the oscillators so make them drift a little bit uh, out of tune not that much because that's why we didn't add that much uh, modulation amount we're going to set this to an unsynced ray so something like this So this LFO is trying to emulate like the sound of analog gear by having the oscillators go a little bit out of tune. You should really try to experiment with this on other sounds as well. It could be really great on synth pads and keys and so on, because in the digital realm, everything can sound a little bit too precise and correct. So by introducing something that's not so pristine, digital correct, it can really add a lot of character in my opinion. So this is like doing something to the pitch course. So now we can jump into the rest of the effects of this sound. So the first effect that we're going to add is the distortion. And we're going to use the down sample. So adding some bit reduction to the sound. But add a really low mix, around 17%. And also pay attention to the master level, not going into the reds. So we're going to turn this down a little bit. Next, we're going to add a chorus, just using the default settings, just to add a little bit of width. Pretty cool. So now the fun part starts. We're going to add a delay after the filter. And we're going to set this to 1.8 here. Put this to ping pong mode. Add a little bit of like filtering and also a little bit of mix. So now, because we have added this LFO modulation to the filter cutoff here, it's going to feed into the delays. So the delays are going to sound a little bit different every time the filter is either open or closing. This is sounding amazing in my ears. It's just instant movement, and it really want them make my head bob, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, so now we're also going to add a reverb, and we're going to use a plate reverb, up with the size, down with the pre-delay. We're going to do a little bit of low cut and high cut, not that important. We're going to crank up the width and add some mix around 40%. We 
you can just hear like this reverb is just changing character every time the filter is opening and closing. And because we're also feeding the delays into the reverb, we just have a bunch of character and texture to this house step sound. Then I'm gonna add a compressor. I'm not gonna do anything fancy, just using the default settings. Always make sure that you're not going into the reds. I'm just going to turn down the master level just to make sure that I'm not doing any digital clipping. So the last effect that we're going to add is just an EQ. And I'm going to use a low, low shelf and a high shelf. For the low shelf, I'm just going to reduce it a little bit um, because I don't want this to occupy the, the low frequencies like the bass area. And then for the high shelf, I'm just going to boost it just to hear those like nice upper harmonic frequencies. Something like this. Really, really amazing sound. So this is actually it in Serum, but I just did some extra processing. So I added an Oso 9 just to make sure that it was not too wide. I still want this to sound nice in mono. So I'm splitting up the bands into these four separate areas. The lower ones are just going to be reduced. This one is going to be reduced all the way to mono. This one is just being pushed a little bit uh, down into mono. And then these two up here are just being boosted a little bit. So it's being spread out a little bit more. So it sounds like this. You can still hear that the, like the main sound is still there in mono, but because we added like so much reverb, it's it's really important to control that this is not being like too stereoized out. And when you push it into mono, the signal should not disappear entirely. So this is just something to check. So yeah, the next like plugin that I added was my faithful Neutron 3. If you don't have this plugin, I really encourage you to get it. It can really just sculpt your sound uh, in a really, really cool way. So I'm adding a transient shaper just to push those transients a little bit more because this is like a stabby kind of sound. So I just wanted to emphasize that. Then I've added an, an exciter with some tape saturation just to color the signal a little bit more. And then I'm finishing off with an e equalizer. Again, moving some of the low end here, boosting this like 270 hertz area because there are some really cool energy and punch here. And then again, boosting with a high shelf just to push those upper frequencies that are sounding really, really dope in the sound. And then I'm using like a limiter just to make sure that there are no like really loud peaks. So the limiter is just catching those and reducing them. And all, also just boosting the volume a little bit. So all in all, this is how it sounds. And as you might hear, because we have used like our LFOs in like free mode when they are not being synced, we have used these like node on random um, sources here for the modulation. Every time the chord steps are hitting, the sound is a little bit different. And this is how it creates like this movement. So if we go into my MIDI pattern, you can see this is actually not that crazy. It's almost like it's only two different chords. But because the filter is opening and closing all the time and all of these like modulation uh, knobs are just changing, the sound is just evolving. This is what makes the difference in my opinion. So I just made a small beat idea with these steps so you can hear them in action. So this is how it sounds. Enjoy. Really, really cool. <laughs> okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, it would mean so much to me if you smash that like button or even subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss any future videos on the channel. I've also launched a Discord server for producers. It's a place where we can share our track ideas, get feedback, provide feedback. It's generally just a cool place to hang out and talk about music and stuff. And I really want you to get involved if you want to. You can join the, the Discord via the link in the description down below. If you want to support this channel even further, you can go and browse some of my sample packs and preset packs on my web shop. The link is also in the description down below. So I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Peace.